Hey, it's Mr. Bebe, and this lesson is on complex patterns of inheritance. So a little bit more uh, in-depth than dominant versus recessive. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Some traits show a range of dominance rather than a strict dominant and recessive relationship. So let's look at our first example, incomplete dominance. So this is when neither allele is completely dominant, so the heterozygous individuals actually have a mix of the two alleles, a, a nice mix. And you see this a lot in color. So if you look at our first example, which is the beta fish, um, you see that there is a green beta fish and there's also a steel blue beta fish. Those are the accepted colors. But if they mate and you end up getting a, uh, a beta fish that has one copy of each of those alleles, you don't get green or steel blue. You actually get an entirely different color. Although in my opinion, it kind of looks very close to the steel blue anyway, but you get royal blue. So let's look at what that looks like right here. So if you uh, are a green beta fish, you have two dominant alleles, but we have a little one at this in the superscript to denote that it's the first type of this dominant allele. A steel blue has B2, B2, so it's a homozygous but dominant, but the second copy of that. And then a royal blue is when there's uh, two dominant alleles, but they're of the different color type. You get the idea. So look at this in a Punnett square. You've got parent number one, which is green on the top, parent number two, which is the steel blue on the side. If they mate, all of their offspring will be heterozygous for the two different colors. And when you actually put green and steel blue together, you get royal blue. So no more green and steel blues in this case if you're uh, mating these certain fish together. Another example is something called the four o'clock flower. And it's the exact same idea here except uh, you have a red flower and you have a white flower, and when you put them together, what do you get? You get pink. All right, so red plus white equals pink, and uh, very much the same with crayons as well. So that is uh, an example of incomplete dominance, as is the beta fish. So let's move on to codominance. So codominance, just like it sounds, is when two of the uh, alleles of a gene are expressed together. Co means together. Neither allele is dominant, and neither is recessive. So they actually are both expressed simultaneously. So if you have this red-white allele for the flower, instead of making pink, you see both red and white. So they are both expressed. They don't have this incomplete dominance where they mix together to make something new. You still see both of them. So a great example is corn color. Now, if you look at corn, you have yellow corn, and we're gonna use CY for these uh, alleles right here. So CY, CY is gonna be yellow corn. Black corn is CB, CB. And you wanna guess what happens if you put a CY with a CB? Yes, you get yellow and black corn together. Notice how the black and the yellow didn't mix and give you a completely new color, but you see individual kernels that are yellow and individual ones that are black, therefore both alleles are expressed. So it's very important to remember that difference between codominance and incomplete dominance. The next thing we're going to look at is multiple alleles. So some genes have more than two possible alleles. So it's not just a dominant allele and a recessive allele. Sometimes there are three, four, five different alleles to choose from. Now the offspring still only get one allele from each parent, but that actually opens up a lot more genotypes and a lot more phenotypes that could possibly happen. So a great example of this is with uh, bunnies and the color of their coat. So if you look at these alleles, you've got the wild type on the left. That just means it's the most common type. That is the C plus C plus. They are brown. You see those most often. But then there is a chinchilla cover, a colored fur. And the chinchilla is actually a, uh, a recessive uh, copy. So you see the, the lowercase c with the ch in the superscript to denote that it's chinchilla. That's black-tipped and white fur. And then you have another recessive allele, which is Himalayan, which is just the little c and the h in the superscript. And then you also have another recessive allele, which is just plain albino white fur. Okay, so you've got only one type of uh, dominant allele, but you have three different recessive alleles, and they can come in any mixture whatsoever. Just remember, there's only one allele that comes from each parent. So you're going to see different versions of these colors all over the place. So another great example of multiple alleles comes in humans, and this is in human blood type. Now, there are three different alleles that control blood type. Now, the interesting thing here is two of these alleles are codominant. 
that would be the one that is denoted IA and then IB. So IA and IB are co-dominant, but they are both dominant over the recessive allele, which is the O allele. So that's why we have blood types A, AB, B, and then O, because you can have one allele that's A and one allele that's B, and they are co-dominant, therefore both get expressed, and you get the AB blood type. And the only way to get the O blood type is if you have two copies of the recessive allele. If you have a, an A allele and a recessive O allele, then you have type A blood. Okay, so there's a lot of different uh, phenotypes that you can, there's a few different phenotypes, uh, four as a matter of fact, and then you have multiple different genotypes. So it's a good exercise to see what you can come up with uh, as the genotypes for all of these. Another interesting fact, um, people tend to ask about this, how the positive and negative, like I have A positive blood or O positive or AB negative, how does that play into it? This is just kind of an interesting thing for you. So let's suppose um, this is when you're talking about RH type. That's the positive and negative in your blood. Um, let's say a, an RH positive man and an RH negative woman, so a man that has a positive blood type and a woman that has a negative blood type, they conceive a child, and that child inside the womb is a positive blood type. What happens is the uh, blood from the fetus is going to kind of mix a little bit with the blood of the mother, and that's going to cause the mother to actually form some antibodies against positive blood types. So that actually doesn't hurt the fetus the first time, but if the mother has a second child who has positive blood, then her antibodies that she made against the positive blood will actually attack the fetus's red blood cells. So that's no good. But fortunately, we have treatments for that. They get a shot. It's no big deal. Okay, the last one we're going to talk about here is polygenic traits. This is a trait that is produced by two or more genes. So great examples are eye color, skin color, and height. So lots and lots of genes uh, uh, determine whether you have blue eyes, light blue eyes, icy blue eyes, green eyes, hazel eyes, light brown, dark brown, and then there's a whole array of skin colors as well, and we all know there's a you're not just tall or short, there's a whole range of heights that we have as well. So these are controlled by many genes. Great example here, you have parent A and parent B, and this actually gives you the odds of having certain colored uh, eye color babies. So if both parents have brown eyes, there's actually still a six and, six and a quarter percent chance they're gonna have a baby with blue eyes. Um, but if you look down at something like uh, two blue-eyed parents, zero percent chance that they have a brown-eyed baby, one percent chance that they have a green-eyed baby, and 99 percent chance that they're gonna have a blue-eyed baby. So just something to think about if you, if you think about what color eyes your parents have and what color eyes you have, and you can actually see what the chances were that you would have had that eye color or another eye color. And the last one is skin color. Now this one is way complex. Okay, there's a few different genes that control it for sure. So we have the sperm on the top and the egg on, on the left side, and you can see all these different alleles turned on or turned off, and you can see how the more alleles, the more dark skin alleles that you have, the uh, darker your skin is. And the fewer you have up in the top left, the lighter your skin will be. And you can see like how there's just this amazing array of different colors that your skin can be uh, from the palest of pale to the darkest of dark and it, it's it's really amazing it's controlled by multiple genes it can't be as simple as one gene controlling it so that's all the different uh, different modes of inheritance that we are looking at here with polygenic multiple alleles co-dominance incomplete dominance um, ways that we can look at genetics without a simple dominant or recessive relationship